And welcome in, guys. Was that not the game I told you it was probably gonna be? Yeah, Guadeloupe came and really made a game out of this. Yeah, they didn't sit down, they didn't lie down, they didn't give up, they kept going, and they looked great throughout the game for a team that's on the road against a big FIFA club. Remember, Guadalupe, not a FIFA club. If you didn't see this game, you missed a great game, I'm telling you now. And those that did see the game, down below, make a comment down below what you thought about the game, what you thought about the new guys on the block. Three guys started, yeah? Three guys in the team started off. We're going to get to the player ratings after this. 10 out of 10. Nobody gets a 10 out of 10. But out of 10 ratings, we'll get to that. And also how they did during the game. The three guys that came into Team Canada to start off in defense, we had Zach McGraw. And I tell you, we're going to tell you about him and his game, but he wasn't out of place. We also had Ali Ahmed. We'll talk about Ali Ahmed as well. And Moise Bambito. We'll tell you about him as well, as well as the other guys, because everybody gets rated on this channel. Now, talking about the game, like I say, if you didn't see this game, you missed a thriller in BMO's Villa. It was absolutely an electric game. I had to turn the sound off, though. I had to turn the sound off, and I won't tell you what channel, but boy, did that guy bore me. It was absolutely not fitting to the game. Stop talking like an infomercial when you've got a great game of football going on. Maybe some of you guys out there listen to a channel or two, but I've got to tell you, when there's a thrilling game on, I'll put the music on, the rock music, and I'll listen to a rocking game the right way, because if you bore me, zing, I turn you off. I hope you do the same. But anyway, as for the game, first 15 minutes, it's an open exchange, pretty even. And on 15 minutes, Thierry Ambrose, one of the guys I told you about in the pre-game, nearly, nearly gets the goal away. Nearly gets the goal away for Guadeloupe on 15. He breaks away, gets a shot off, it makes a rebound, gets a head on, he's still fighting for it, it just goes wide. After 15 minutes, they gave us an early warning. And on 22 minutes, that Ambrose guy, Thierry Ambrose, well, he made it count this time. Slides the ball beautifully under Borjan, and it goes in the net. Now, Borjan did get a big piece of that, and it might have been luckier on another day, but it goes in 1-0 Guadeloupe. Not against the play. Guadeloupe are playing a very, very decent road game. They're not looking to entertain. They're looking to get a result, and they did get a result on the day. You're going to hear about it as we go through. But my tip about Thierry Ambrose, that definitely showed up. At halftime, it's 1-0, and it's a thriller. And this was definitely a game where you said, you know, Canada's definitely in this game. The new guys are shining pretty well. The regulars are doing pretty well. They're not firing completely, but it's the chemistry that they haven't got that Guadalupe has. And in the next 45 minutes, you kind of thought, maybe that chemistry is going to shine through with Canada, which it did. It absolutely did. Now, we got underway. We got underway on 47 minutes. Take a look at the picture. Definitely not a penalty. VAR. Them guys. Them guys there. Them guys. Them guys robbed us of a penalty, you think? No, they got it right. Absolutely. And take a look at the picture again. You can see contact made by Alfonsi before Hoylitz takes a tumble. So good call by the referee, good call by VAR. We don't always like VAR, do we? But it was a good call on the day. But anyway, it doesn't matter because 49 minutes in, Hoylet says, you know, I'll get the better of you now. I'm going to go down the wing. I go down the wing. I start surging through. I slide a ball in for Lucas Cavallini. Far end. It was a brilliant cross. And it's a 1-1 game. Beautiful, beautiful finish by Cavallini. But the cross... And the experience play from Hoylet was what made the goal. Now, during the first and the second half, we had a lot of great plays from a lot of great players. But it's the unfortunate plays that make games change. And like i got to tell you, on 70 minutes, probably the luckiest goal Canada's ever going to get. But it comes from the industry and the amazing skill set from this very young Canadian, Ali Hakmed. And i got to tell you, when you look at this kid, he is definitely one for the future. I want him on the team all the time right now because he thrills me. He excites me. And if he excites me, I'm sure he excited you too. But Ali Ahmed goes through a few players, filters a ball through to Cavallini, who never gets on the end of it. He's not that far off. But I'll tell you what, <laughs> Medellina gets on the end of it and puts it in his own net. And it's a 2-1 game for Canada on 70 minutes. Like I say, the luckiest goal we're ever going to get. But it wouldn't last, and it wouldn't last. 
And the last 20 minutes, we're playing it out. We're playing it out. We get into 90 minutes plus, and it looks like we've got a 2-1 win. Free kick given away. The ball then resets, comes over the far side of the box, cross comes in. And Russell Rowe, unfortunately, on his debut for Canada, scores an own goal. You have to feel so sorry for the young man. But don't stick your foot out where it doesn't belong. And if you're a forward in a defensive mode, that's what sometimes can happen. On the day, it was a 2-2 draw. Guadalupe came to play. They, they played a fantastic game, in my opinion. And they played exactly the game I thought they would. I say this much, though. To win that game, we didn't need to make as many changes as we did in the second half. And I think that Johnny Herman may want to have played two more players in the next game instead of too many players in this game. That's the only downfall. Tactically, he didn't change the game for me at all, Johnny Herdman. The players out there did a fantastic job. Let's take a look at the prior ratings out of 10 and what I think they did on the night. Let's take a look. Okay, now talking about the guys we started off with, i got to tell you, Milan Bourjan wasn't his best night, in my opinion, and he's had a few nights where it wasn't his best night. I don't give him anywhere near a 10. I gave him a 6 out of 10, and I'm just being honest, he's lucky to get a 6. He didn't do anything spectacular during the game. Maybe that spectacular save that was called offside that he didn't need to make was a brilliant highlight reel save, but honestly, he doesn't do it for me. And he didn't. And I'm thinking this game, Tom McGill, Dane St. Clair should have started. It wouldn't have changed this result at all. Now, Moise Bombito comes in. I give this guy 7 out of 10. I liked what I saw. The tough tackling, the slick passing. I'm surprised he didn't last longer than he did. I wanted more of Bombito. Moise Bombito, for his first game for Canada, turned up, did well now needs to be a member of the squad. He gives you that energy that's lacking in that area between the lines. I was well impressed by Moyes Bambito. Kamal Miller played another great game today. Six out of ten is all he's getting, though. But very sure, very safe. Kamal gives you that game all the time. Zach McGraw, young kid, started off a little bit nervier, but as the game grew, so did he. Look for more from Zach McGraw. I'm giving him a 7 out of 10 for his debut game. He was absolutely flawless. Just one little mistake in their first half. But over the 90 minutes plus five, Zach McGraw, definitely one guy you want to keep. Richie Larea, with all his frustrations and all his in-your-face and pushing people around, he winds you up. Did he wind you up? Because he wound Guadalupe up. And you know what? That's not always a bad thing, as long as it's done in the right way. And Richie got it perfectly today. Played another decent game, 6 out of 10 on the night. Another performance by Richie, who's looking for probably another club to move for pretty soon. Victoria, i got to say this much, 5 out of 10. Wasn't Canada's worst player by a, by a mile, but uh, for today, wasn't his best game. 5 out of 10 is all I'm giving him. And maybe in a year or so, you might want to change him out, John, because it's looking like it's coming towards the end of it for Stephen Vittoria. Not coming down on him too hard, but it really does. Liam Miller, 7 out of 10 on the night. Some great industry, great wing play. Very, very much a, a guy who wanted to work his ass off all night long. Didn't last all night long, but as far as the game itself, great wing play, great interchange passing, and a great calm nature. And I'll tell you this, I really think that Liam actually enjoyed tonight's game, but he gets a 7 out of 10. Ali Ahmed, man of the match. Absolutely man of the match. An absolute stalwart performance by such a young guy. And on the ball, he reminds me of an experienced guy who's been in the game for 10 years and he's actually in his prime. How good can Ali Ahmed become? I tell you now, player of the game, he stood out streets and streets above anybody else, head and shoulders a bunch of the rest. Nobody could touch him. And great honesty. I'll tell you what, great passing, a great head, great feet, like I told you he had. And I'll tell you what, what an amazing career this young guy can have. And has had tough injuries in the past and still battles through. Man of the match, Ali Ahmed. Absolute brilliant. Eight out of ten on the night. Canada's top guy. Jonathan Osorio gets a six out of ten for what he did. He does the same thing every game. Safe, sure, puts the ball where it needs to be. Never a risk factor. And once in a while, shocks the hell out of you when he makes a diving tackle and he gets the ball cleanly. Unbelievable. Jonathan Osorio, six on the day out of ten. Lucas Cavallini led the line pretty well. Got his goal at the end of the day off a Hoylet cross and a great, great, great clean finish right low where the keeper can't go. On the night, 
six out of ten leading the line. And finally, Junior Hoylet, Junior Hoylet, sorry, Junior Hoylet, another seasoned veteran. It's not coming to the end completely, but you can see that slowly it is coming to the end. Give it another year to 18 months, and I think that Junior may well be at the end of the rainbow with somebody like maybe Charles Andreas Brim coming in to possibly replace him. Junior gets a 7 out of 10. He did very well. The guys that came on on the substitutes bench, you can talk about Schaffelberg, Brim, Fraser. You can also talk about Hoylitz and Miller coming off for those guys. Then is Cavallini's goal on the ninth, 79th minute. That's a 19th goal of the career from 37 games. And Jason Rowe, he came on. And obviously, Zator came on in 89. Slightly disappointed to see Jason Rowe come on so late. And slightly disappointed to see Dominic Zator come on so late. I wanted to see both of them play the ball around. But on the day, it's a 2-2 draw. It's not as bad as it could have been. Canada should have had the win, but Guadalupe did not give up now, did they? And it was what I told you it could be. Guadalupe now, historical result moving home. But you've got to say... For a team that was a mixture of regulars and new guys, this was not a bad performance. And they fought back to get that goal and to get up one. And unfortunately, it was a new guy that coughed up the goal, trying to do the right thing. But like I said on the head of this, don't stick your feet where it doesn't need to be. On the day, Canada 2, Guadalupe 2. It was a fantastic game. And if you missed it, you missed an absolute barn-burning game. Tell you what, let's take a look at the stats before we get out of here. Canada, 17 shots, 5 on target, 56% possession, 434 passes, 83% pass accuracy, that's not bad, 13 fouls, 2 yellow cards, 2 offsides, 5 corners. Guadeloupe, 9 shots, 4 on target, that's decent. 4 on target from 9 is definitely on the money. 44% possession, you'd expect that, they were the road team. Pass accuracy wasn't the best, 77%. Fouls, 17, two yellow cards, no reds, one offside, and two corners. Stats-wise, this game was pretty even, as it was on the field, and it was a great, entertaining game. If you loved it, tell me how you loved it. If you hated it, tell me how you hated it. If you thought the new guys on the block really did it for you, tell me why. But at the end of the day, I see this as a positive moving forward. We can add a few players. And I tell you what, this team excited me tonight. The last few Canada games hasn't been this exciting. So putting new guys in makes a few guys get nervous. And when you think of all the big guys that are not there today or for the Gold Cup in the next two games plus, doesn't that excite you for the future? And hey, by the way, one thing. Jason DeVos came out and said about the bankruptcy thing. Here's the picture. Read this. My own interpretation of that is, why don't you go bankrupt? Why don't you go bankrupt and start it all over again? There's no point whittling all the money away to some organization outside of soccer. They may say they're soccer, and I say they own the CPL too, and they own Canada Soccer too. One, one corporation that has its hands on both should never happen. And whoever signed that deal signed the worst deal ever in Canadian soccer history. On the day, Guadeloupe 2, Canada 2. But on the day, it's Canada 2, Guadeloupe 2. Get ready for the next show, because that's the pregame for Guatemala. And that's coming up in 24 hours. And the game is coming up at the Shell Energy Stadium, Houston, USA. USA. And it's a big game. We need points out of the big game there. One point off this game. We don't need to draw the next game. We've definitely got to go for the win. Get ready for the pregame. Canada, Guatemala. Cheers. <laughs>